Hi there and welcome to another Greyhound video with Magnus and Scout. In this video I thought I'd cover the cost of adopting a Greyhound. Not just the initial outlay fee, but basically the overall cost of owning and taking care of a Greyhound. So here's my breakdown on what it costs to take care of a Greyhound. We adopted Magnus and Scout from the Greyhound Trust branch in Edinburgh. There they have a suggested donation fee for adopting, which is £250. This goes towards the cost of things like spaying, neutering, any dental work, any health checkups they have to have before being handed over for adoption. It also covers the paperwork as well. Along with that, you also get a muzzle, a leather martingale gale collar, and a lead as well so you get quite a lot for 250 pounds but again that's only covering a fraction of what the actual cost of taking care of this dog and all these health checks actually are but that is the suggested donation fee so you're starting off with that 250 pound outlet before the dog has even left the kennels once you are ready to take your dog home there's a couple of things you want to have in place before the dog gets there things such as beds crates, food, bowls, so I'll go over those things now. One thing you'll need when your dog comes home is a bed for them to lie down on. One good idea is to basically buy a single duvet or comforter from the store. This you can basically fold in half and makes an excellent dog bed which you can move to different parts of the house really easy, really easy to launder and they start usually about £6 going up from there. So it's a really cheap, affordable way to get a nice dog bed. You can buy a nice cover for it as well so they have a very pretty dog bed which is easy to clean and easy to launder so i'd recommend these so about 15 pounds you can get a duvet and a duvet cover another thing you may wish to purchase is a crate you may wish to get this if your greyhound has got a history of using these it's a good place to make your dog feel nice and safe and secure as a little den or a safe place to go especially when they're newly adapted to your home these can start at about 40 pounds you gotta make sure you get the correct size and they go all the way up to about 80 pound we bought ours on gumtree as uh, second hand used for about 10 pounds so it's worth going down that route save yourself some money especially if you don't know your dog is necessarily going to use it beyond the first couple of weeks but they are out there you can buy them brand new but i would suggest getting one second hand and save yourself some money for something else but they are great especially if dogs got history of using them magnus basically was used to using these so it was a nice little safe place to go especially when he first joined us that way he had this little safe environment put a cover on to make it look prettier as well but a nice little safe space to hang out by himself if he wanted to get away from us and getting away from any noise or distractions. So crates, they are worth investing in if you know your dog's got history in using them. Otherwise, get a second-hand one, see how they do, and go from there. For the first few months that we owned Magnus, he wouldn't use any beds apart from the crate bed. He would sleep on the floor or on the crate, but eventually he started using the dog beds we've got for him. Now, they're all about the dog beds, even ones that are too small for him, like Scouts, you'll still sneak in there as well. But we basically have got a couple of dog beds in each room, so we've got about six or seven in the house in total. This style basically we got from Pets at Home for about £35, but rather than make it dirty quickly, throw a blanket in there, a £5 blanket, all you've got to do then is launder the blanket and not wash the bed every week keeps it cleaner for longer and it lasts longer that way same for the beds to sleep on i've got these little mattresses here from pets at home as well rather than again this get worn down too quickly throw a duvet on top and then that way all you're doing again is washing the duvet it makes the bed nice and comfortable for them you can make a little nest but you're saving some money and less time laundering a dog baby you can just wash the duvet cover instead so you'll find lots of choice out there in the pet stores for dog beds, lots of pretty different styles. One thing you'll notice though from online looking at them, because greyhounds are the bigger size dogs, you're going to be looking at the higher end prices for the dog beds rather than the lower end. So if you see it from a range from 40 to 60, expect to pay the 60. From 60 to 90, expect to pay 90 because that'll be the extra large size that you'll probably need for your greyhound to be able to fit on rather than the small or medium, which are for smaller size dogs. But there's lots of great choices out there. Again, I always suggest just basically buy whatever one you like, basically, but throw a blanket on top. Then all you've got to do is launder the blanket every week rather than have to wash the bed 
everywhere you're having a bed smell it's just a blanket you can go on so that's my little tips for dog beds so you can see magnus does enjoy a good dog bed Another thing you're going to need is a raised food and water bowl for your dog. These have to be raised off the ground so they're a safe height for your ground to eat and drink from without coughing or spluttering. You can buy lots of different types that are different heights, different styles, but you need to make sure it's raised off the ground. We bought ours from uh, Gumtree for about £5. It was used second hand, but you can either do that as well or find one online. Usually start about sort of £15 going up from there depending on the size you want. So you want to get something that's appropriate size for a greyhound and not a race feeder for a small dog. We do use this all the time for eating and drinking, but now basically just for a water station, because we've got Magnus and Scout, rather than have them two eat at the one little container was a bit awkward, we basically bought these larger bowls and little stools them to sit on. And we use these for their main meals. These bowls are bought from a company called B&M. They're reasonably affordable bowls. They're very deep, nice, easy to throw in the dishwasher. They cost about basically just under four pound and are very, very good. So can't recommend them highly enough. But again, you can go for whatever style you like as long as it is deep enough to put the food in there. Due to the level of body fat that a greyhound has, you're going to have to get a coat for your greyhound. And depending where you live in the world, you may need more than one style of coat. For Max and Scout, they've got three coats each. They've got their multi-purpose one, a sort of rain coat, and then a heavy one with a snood for winter time. This is their multi-purpose coats here. These were purchased from a web store called the Greyhound Superstore. Uh, for around £18. Magnus is a little bit bigger, so his is around £20. But you can find them online. Very durable, very good coats, and very all-purpose coats for the dogs. And coats are like fashion, so you can find lots of different styles out there, lots of different price points as well. Magnus has got a custom rain coat that was basically custom made and measured for him, and even has his name on it as well. As I mentioned earlier, Greyhound will come with a leather martingale collar and a lead from your Greyhound Adoption Centre. Okay, the collar might be slightly different material, but it will be a martingale style. But again, it may come with this style with a buckle on there, which is nice and effective and handy to the vet. But basically, if you've got a very excitable dog, trying to get that clasp buckled is quite challenging. Again, you might not like the colour as well. I may think, oh, it looks quite menacing having this solid black collar. So we did decide to get something a little bit more appropriate looking for Magnus and his Soie de Vive. So we've got this style here, basically it's a martingale collar from a company called Kitch Collars. The lead's from a supermarket and cost about five pounds, but the collar was around 20. We also bought, you can see it on the end there, a green additional uh, poo bag dispenser. These are vital things to have. They cost about two or three pounds, very cheap, but very good thing to have on the end of your lead so you never run out of poo bags because they're always right there. Again, these can be bought online from a company called Earth Rated. They're biodegradable. Cost about two or three pounds for a dispenser and you can get basically refills on the poo bags as well. They come in different size packs. We usually buy the large ones about 120 and that does for a, a few weeks to months. If you are buying collars, again, it's appropriate to get the appropriate size collar for your dog. So you need to make sure you take measurements. And for lead, you want to try and get a nice length that's good for you for walking with. Mangs's lead is about one meter, 60 centimeters, and Scout's is slightly longer. You also need to make sure if the leads that it has the appropriate weight strength for the type of dog. Some leads you'll see look very similar, but only for dogs that weigh up to like 20 kilograms. And obviously Magnus and Scout are a little bit bigger than that. But these are the leads and the colors we got from Kitch Colors. Again, it's a website online. We've got a lot of selection on there and it's very nicely made. Okay, we've not had to change Magnus's collar. I've had it for about almost four years now. So they're really well worth the money and can't recommend them highly enough. Unless you want the dog eating your food, one thing you're going to have to get in the house before the dog arrives 
is food. There's lots of choices out there in the supermarkets and in pet stores. You've got the options of going for dry food, wet food, frozen, raw. The choice is yours. It can be quite overwhelming at first trying to figure out which is the appropriate type of food for your dog. You just want to basically try and find and buy the best that you can on your budget. Again, don't go bankrupt, but basically try and get the best you can with the best balanced nutrition and best ingredients in there. And also that has no side effects for your dog, like going to the bathroom a lot. So for Magnus and Scout, we feed them on a raw diet, but we have tried at times some of the dry stuff to see how that would go down, because I thought it would be easier and more economical, but we just found that we were happier with the results from the wet and raw foods. If you're not sure what food to go for, you can also ask your adoption center what food they recommend or what food the dog likes and perhaps continue that food on for a period of time as well. Magus eats around 750 to 800 kilograms of food per day. Uh, it's not all made up from one source, so we have different things in there as well. For Magnus and Scout's breakfast, we give them three pieces of chicken. That's usually our two pieces of thigh and a drumstick or three drumsticks. We get this seven days a week. We usually buy bags of 2.5 kilograms of chicken. Uh, this usually costs us around £3.50 per bag. For their main meals, we feed Manson Scout the Working Dog Natural and Sinks Dog Food. Comes in a variety of different flavours. Comes in a one kilogram package, which we'll split in half and give 60% uh, to Magnus and 40% to Scout. Again, you can lots of different flavours online. You start usually about sort of 270 up to about 320 for the different flavours of food. And these can be bought online and in some pet stores as well. To the natural instincts, we'll also add things like rice, carrots, green beans, and sardines as well. So this makes a big part of their diet. I uh, usually buy about seven tubs per week. In addition to that, we've also got training treats, things like wag treats, gravy bones, and these adventure nuggets, which are quite good. Choose these for training purposes and occasional treats. We also do things like the Kong as well, which will put part of the dinner in there, freeze it, and give it to them the next day as well. Because we're using part of the dinner, again, that saves on money as well. In addition to this, we might use things like sprats which is a great source of omega-3s for your dog. So we'll add some of these to the treats as well. This tub, 500 grams, usually costs about 15 pounds. When it comes to training treats, there are lots of options out there. Some are better for your dogs than others. Again, you don't want to solely train with treats. You want to try and do praise training as well. But sometimes at first, it is handy to have those treats available to help correct and adjust behaviors and to make your dog feel rewarded for doing something good as well. But there's lots of options out there. Again, just make sure they are safe for your dog's stomach. And you don't have to learn the hard way. We're very popular with the WAG treats for training purposes. Another thing we'll give our greyhounds from time to time is bones to gnaw and to chew on. These usually cost about two or three pound each and keeps them entertained for quite some time. And it's also good for cleaning their teeth and giving them a source of calcium as well. One thing you might like to have in the house for when your dog arrives is a couple of toys. Don't buy too many because they might not play with them at all, but they might enjoy them, so get them a couple. There's lots of different types there. You've got the cuddly toy. Some are just soft, cuddly toys. Some have a squeaker inside, which our greyhounds absolutely love. You've got the sort of tug toy where they can sort of gnaw and pull at it and it won't be destroyed too quickly. And you've got the interactive toy. You can put treats or food inside and they can try and get the food outside. These are very popular with our greyhounds. The Kongs especially, you can put some of the dinner in there, put it in the freezer, put the food that way, and then just give it to them as a treat. If you're gonna be gone for a little bit of time, to keep them stimulated while they're gone, you can basically give them this Kong toy or Kong treat to basically work on. If it's frozen, it lasts longer. I'll put some of the dinner in there, maybe a little peanut butter on top, 
and they can work on those while we're gone. That way they've got some stimulation when we're out of the house. Two of the most popular toys in our house are the treat ball and the treat snake. Here you can put in treats into the body of the snake or in the belly of the ball. It basically rolls around or they paw at the snake and they can get the treats outside. They've been very durable. We got the ball for around £5. The snake was a little bit dearer. It was closer to about £15, but both have survived both Scout and Magnus going at them for quite some time. And these are very, very popular with the dogs in our house. Toys can vary in price from ones that are five or six pounds going up from there. You wanna make sure though that they are dog safe toys so there's no small parts that can basically get out like an eyeball and that your dog can accidentally eat. Uh, but these are lots and lots of options out there. Again, we've got lots and lots of toys that none of them are played with at all and others that are played to death. So it's kind of trial and error, try to figure out which toy works best for your dog. Next thing you want to purchase basically is some brushes for your dog. Greyhounds don't require much grooming, but it is nice to give them a brush once in a while to get rid of that loose hair from their coats. You can buy lots of different types of brushes online. Again, you don't need to spend too much money because there are greyhounds and there won't be much grooming involved. Just get something that works to get the hair out. When it is shedding time, however, you might want something a bit more heavy duty to get rid of that loose hair. They do shed about two or three times a year. For us, we use a thing called a shedding blade. It's actually designed for horses, but works well on dogs as well. It's got a blade with a handle, which you can basically drag along the dog and it gets rid of all the loose hair. There's lots of these again available online. Start as cheap as about four pound. The one we've got probably costs about eight pound, which we got again from Amazon delivered fairly quickly. Again, it's been very durable, great tool, great for getting all that loose hair from the undercoat out from the dog, basically. And they look a lot cleaner afterwards and there's a lot less hairs in your house and in your home. So I recommend getting a shedding blade if you have got a dog. Magnus was particularly furry dogs. So we use it quite a lot on him. Scout, not so much, but it is still a great tool to have in your arsenal to avoid that dog hair being all over your home. Another thing you might need to get is basically nail trimmers or a little Dremel for the toenails. Unless you basically go somewhere and have your dog's nails cut for you. These tools, again, you can buy online different prices. We've got a pair that's about six pound from Amazon for the nail clips. But again, our local branch, the Greyhound Trust, we get the nails cut there, which saves us doing it. But that's something you'll have to be looking out for as well. Another thing you may have to do for your greyhound is to take them to a grooming establishment to get washed and bathed. Your bathtub or shower might not be big enough to handle a dog such as Magnus. Therefore, you may go to a grooming centre to get your dog washed. We wash Magnus usually about twice a year, so it's not a common occurrence. That will set us back about £20 per visit for washing and getting Magnus all clean and spiffy. Looking after your dog's dental care is very important and they will need their teeth brushed and cleaned just like a human. There's lots of options out there as far as particular toothpaste and toothbrushes for dogs. You've got very small ones. We use a finger brush for Magnus and a toothpaste from a company called Logic. We've got it on a repeat order online. So basically you get a cheaper rate for a repeat order because it's something you're gonna keep using out there as well. But we do wash and clean Magnus' teeth as often as we can, try and get rid of that plaque that builds up on their teeth, especially the teeth at the front. Because they eat them bones, it's more the teeth at the back that will get cleaned by those rather than the front teeth. So you gotta make sure that you do look out for your dog's dental health as well as their overall health as well. In addition to brushing their teeth, you can add things to their water, but you also get things like these woof brushes, which are like dentist sticks uh, for dogs, basically it's a chew treat that you can chew on, which helps give them fresher breath and helps fight some of that plaque as well. You can also get things like plaque oil, which you can add to their dog's food to help reduce the plaque buildup for your dog.
When you collect your dog from the adoption centre, it will have already had a medical by the vet, given the once over and been given an up to date and current flea, tick and wormer medication. These last for several months. However, once these medications wear off, you will have to get new medication for your dog. You can buy these yourself online or in supermarkets. There's lots of different options out there to buy. However, some vets have options where you can sign up for a thing called like a pet club or a pet membership where you get these medications as part of a package the vet will contact you to basically inform you when the medication is due for collection you'll also get things like a physical as part of that package as well so these are usually a good way of saving some money on some vet bills you get reminders for when the medication is due and you get the appropriate type of medication to treat your dog so I'd recommend these options if you have these available at your local vet again if you're getting a vet make sure it's got experience with sight hounds additional medications we have in for our house are things like adaptal for the anxiety when the dogs get stressed by things like fireworks or thunder we also have things like procolin which we use when the dogs have loose stools if they've eaten something on the street that they shouldn't have they might have loose stools this is a good way to firm them up and to get them regular again. This you can find on stores online. Usually cost somewhere between 15 to 20 pound per tube, and that'll last for several bouts of the loose stools. One thing I'd recommend getting for your dog is some type of pet insurance. If you don't do this, you will be paying out of pocket every time for the vet, which is fair enough if it's small things, but like scallops, you break your leg, you might have a big accident, and it's better to have the insurance for those purposes. There's lots of comparison websites out there online where you can find the different types and different coverages. These ones here are just fees I put in for an eight-year-old greyhound. Again, if they've got pre-existing conditions, that may mean a higher insurance bill. Another thing you may have to consider if you're working for long periods and not able to take your dogs out for walks is to get a dog walker or to go for daycare. Uh, your dog shouldn't be left alone for extremely long periods of time. Therefore, if you're going to be working all day, it is wise to have someone either stop by and take a dog out for a pee break or perhaps get a dog walker or go for daycare. These rates can vary depending on if it's an individual dog walk or a group dog walk. In the past, Magnus would go on group dog walks and we're paying around 12 to 15 pound for those dog walks for an hour off dog walk. Other things you have as well is daycare. These basically you can go drop your dog off in the morning and collect it in the evening. These are a bit more expensive, but again, they're getting attention all day long and getting supervised. The other thing is if you're going on holiday, one thing you'll look to try and find is a kennel, somewhere where basically the dogs can board or stay where you go on holiday or are absent. Again, these can vary in rates and prices depending on the facilities and the type of dog you have as well. If you've got a car, one thing you'll definitely need is a car harness for your dog to keep them safe and secure in the car. These can vary in price from about £25 all the way up to £100. Some additional extras you can buy for your dog are things like first aid kits. We made a little first aid kit with bandages foot rubs, a magnifying glass to be able to see any injuries up and close. So you can get all these sort of things put together. Other things you can purchase, especially when it's dark outside, is some illuminations for your dog to make sure they're nice and safe as far as being seen by motorists or pedestrians whilst out on early mornings or on dark evenings. And lastly, other things you can buy which helps the process is some books to do some research on your new family member. These are two books that we bought. Again, bought them on Amazon, used copies, so you can save some money there. So that's my video on what it costs to take care of a greyhound. Again, you could do it cheaper than what I've done. This is just what we've put towards it. You can spend more money. The choice is yours, but each of these categories probably needs something from just to take care of the well-being of your dog. So that's my video on what it costs to take care of a greyhound so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time so bye from me 
and it's by from Magnus and Scope.